Um, a very quick, uh, a very quick ch check with you. Please use again the toolbar and uh, write uh, your expectation, your main expectation for this session today in one word. So you go to the toolbar you had, you go to the comment section and uh, check the text. Okay, there we've got the first one. Uh, who did it? Text, perfect. Clarity, that's great. Interactive, engaging, that what, that's what I'm trying to do. Wonderful. So here we have some, I have to move you around a little bit so that not everybody is, uh, is writing over the others. Okay. So, capital budget. Uh, capital budgeting, we're talking about something which is part of the overall budgeting process, but has its own methodology. Why does it have its own methodology? Because we're looking at major one-time investments. And these major one-time investments will be judged to understand what's the return they deliver. And this return has to be measured against the costs of capital of the uh, company to decide whether it's good or not. And always be aware cost needs to be after tax cost, which is an important point and I'm coming to that in a second. Apparently the majority of the participants now uh, are saying option four is the best, but some are undecided. My question is now, um, why uh, somebody of, of the, who has chosen the option four, uh, why would you say option four is best? Can, can somebody just speak up briefly and tell me why you think option four is best? Just turn on your microphone. Remember that one because otherwise I can't hear you. Because, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, because it, it looks like a long-term investment to me. So, and, okay. and it looks like, I mean, if you're making double, um, yeah, if, if it doubles from year five to year six, so my assumption is that it's going to be even more successful um, after those six years. Okay, yeah. So you're saying the, the overall returns in, in absolute figures, it, it's a longer, it gives you longer for a longer time returns and at the very end there is some high returns. Yes. Someone who chose option two, why option two? Who chose option two? Just speak up. You can raise your hand and we can also unmute your line if you want. Yeah. I okay. choose option two because it's the, an investment in, it brings your money back in three years time. Okay. So Very not uh, waiting for six years uh, for some return, but mm -hmm. a short uh, period you can do afterwards with your one and one dot one million, a lot more that probably brings more than the other options. So uh, Geert, what you're saying is you're trying to avoid the uncertainty of uh, the cash flows that get, go very much into the future and you want to be sure that you get the investment back as soon as possible. Yes, you can plan in three years, but uh, maybe not in six years, but that's probably because of my industry. Yeah, which, which is okay. And, and I got that. I mean, I was, I was in, in the payment service industries. We had uh, project uh, proposals to, to, to give where people were expecting a return on investment within 12 months, I can tell you. Yes. And if, if, if someone from the cruise industry uh, invests into a ship, then uh, three years probably is nothing. Uh, and uh, the return on investment calculation needs much, much more time. But the key element or the key point here is, it is of importance when is the point in time where the cash inflows come back. Where, when does the money come back? And this when does the money come back is actually um, related to the concept of time value of money. Uh, 300,000 next year coming back have a different value than 300,000 coming back in four or five years. How do we account for the time value of money? Anybody has a suggestion? And the one key element of uh, this uh, consideration is only consider incremental 
uh, cash flows. So whatever is unchanged uh, does not influence your decision for the future. So uh, for example, if you want, uh, let's take the example of the CRM system. Um, would you, um, who would, if you have a CRM system and uh, you actually have tried to introduce a CRM system uh, for once and the first attempt has not been successful. Um, the second attempt, actually, my questions to all of you, do you think, if you think that the second attempt should consider the costs of the first uh, unsuccessful event, uh, then tick the green, uh, the green checkbox. If you think that for the second uh, attempt to introduce a new CRM system, uh, you would not consider the failed costs of the first attempt, tick the red cross on your participant uh, menu. Okay, I see one red cross, one green checkbox. Okay, so I have five feedbacks there. Three greens, three reds. So apparently the audience here in the room is a bit undecided whether the, the sunk costs of the first investment have to be considered or not. Time value of money is what is accounted for with interest rates. So the interest rate adjusts the value of money to the point in time when it's coming in. So discounting, and that's what the technically is called discounting future cash flows. We adjust the future cash flow using the interest rate, an interest rate um, to account for the fact that a cash backflow comes later or earlier. And the concept used to do that is the following concept, the concept of weighted average cost of capital. Because the question is, what interest rate do we take? And the one interest rate which is most important for a company is what is called the WEG. And to try that out, we're now having a little assignment for you to do in work groups. And Lucille will set them up. Uh, let me just briefly explain uh, your task. And then Lucille will take over uh, to assign you to your work groups. So we have a company that has a total capital of $800,000, let's say. Shareholder equity is 500,000, which by consequence in this case means um, debt uh, is 300,000. The interest rate of this company's debt is 6%. And the shareholder expect for their equity a 16% return. But remember, on the interest rate on the debt, on the 6% uh, for the debt, um, the effective tax rate is 25%. So 25% of this 6% will reduce the tax burden. So your task is now to calculate the WEC. And if you have time enough, you can uh, discuss the second question as well. But let's focus on calculating the WEC. Lucille, you assign our participants to their work groups. Yes, so now we will send you in breakout rooms. So these are small rooms where you will be in groups of uh, three or fours. So uh, what, what is it we're talking about? The, we're talking about the company that is paying 6% interest on its debt. And remember there was another line saying the effective tax rate is 25%. What does that mean? They're paying 25% on their profits. So additional costs like these interest uh, costs will reduce the tax they pay, which means that ta after tax cost of debt, so the after tax cost of this interest is 6% times one minus the 0.25. So you only need to account for three quarters of this interest rate. So the after tax cost rate of debt in this case is 4.5. This is the one part. The second part you were given 16% return on equity. So the owners tell you we want to make a 16% return on the money we give you. And then we need to account for the composition of 
the capital. And there is two ways of calculating that. One way is shown here. So you have long-term debt of 300,000 at an after-tax rate of 4.5%. That gives you an annual cost of 13,500. And you have 500,000 of equity, sorry, where the owners expect 16%. So they are expecting 80,000 return per year. Whether that is dividend or incremental of value, that's a different story. So on the total capital of 800,000, there is an overall expectations of 93.5%. 90, and that now means that the WAC of this company is 93.5 divided by 800,000, which is 11.69%. I enjoyed the exercise given. Thank you, Teresa. Now wondering if the exercise can be customized with real life example. Uh, I, I can answer that directly. Definitely, yes. I mean, we have an off the shelf product, Fundamentals of Finance, that we can run uh, on an Inco uh, base. So uh, just for an audience from one company. The first stage of, of customization would be to take the theoretical contact content as is and just replace the case studies with real life case studies from the from the specific customer and the third level then would go would would be to really go over the whole program it's just a question of whether it's really needed for the purpose of the industry you are in or for your company uh, and how much you are willing or you have to invest because naturally reworking the whole program is a, is a certain investment as well